Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. You're down. Now for those of y'all new to my page in 1994, I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. During those times, I accumulated some good stories. I'm going to drop one on y'all today. If you happen to like this story, definitely be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you will be notified ASAP and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Also, man, I rap and my flow is none like Curtis Blow. Go to my YouTube playlist, scroll down to gas stations, you're gonna find a lot of my music there. I got another song called Never Gave Me Therapy. It's on all major streaming sites. Be sure to check that out, man. I'm telling you, I gas. Do not get it twisted. Now let's hop right up into this story. Now, this particular story right here takes place in Ironwood on B Yard around 2000, 2001 somewhere around there. Now, I happened to be down there with a homie of mine who I grew up with by the name of Biscuit. I told you guys maybe about last week or so, me and Biscuit happened to grow up a couple of doors away from each other. I had been knowing Biscuit pretty much all my life. So yeah, it's always cool to, if you happen to unfortunately end up in the, in, in the in penitentiary system, it's at least cool to be in there with somebody that you know from the street, somebody that you grew up with. Excuse me, and actually, me and Biscuit were sellies, right? And so now keep in mind, right, I was born in 1971. So I grew up in an entirely different time than from today, you know. So we grew up with principles of respect. That's some of the first things that we learned, principles of respect. So even when we was out there on the streets, gang banging, selling dope, uh, and especially being from a small community like Bannon, where everybody knew it everybody knew each other, you know, when we would be on the corner selling dope, we might recognize a car coming through as one of the homies' cars or, the, excuse me, one of the homies' mother's cars or, or father's cars. Hey, we'd snatch our hat off, you know, put the weed up, try to hide the fact that we were selling dope, all that type of stuff because it was all about respect. And one of the things that was definitely respected back then was the church. Um, you know, I was pretty much raised up in the church, man, uh, you know, uh, sung in the angel choir when I was five or six, you know, my mom, my grandmother had been going to that church for years and years, 30, 40 years probably, you know, um, and so, you know, at one point in time, I sung in the angel choir, um, I would go to church probably at least two or three times a month, if not more than that, up until about the age of 13, in the summertime, I would go to, we would have, the um, summer, Bible, summer Bible vacation school or Bible vacation school or something like that in the summer where, you know, me, a lot of my homies and classmates, we'd all go there and everything. So the church was also something that was definitely highly respected in my upbringing. Right. So now, like I say, fast forward on, man, to now we in Ironwood, you know, me, I got a life sentence. My uh, old former next door neighbor, my homie Biscuit, he got a life sentence, you know, and so we up there, we chilling. Now, Biscuit... <clears throat> was extremely gifted musically. You know, this dude could play the uh, guitar. He could play the bass guitar. He played the bass guitar uh, upside down, or actually because he was he was left-handed, and most bass guitars are for a right-handed person, I believe. So he could play the piano. Dude could play the drums. I'm talking about on an extremely high level, man. This dude made R&B, rap, hip-hop, gospel, anything man you'd come in there you'd come in there you'd sing a song or whatever he he'd play it by ear find the melody to whatever you was playing and it would sound like you know that was a song you guys have been having all your life man so yeah biscuit was extremely extremely talented when it came to the music and so um his thing was you know music like i say he they had a keyboard in the chapel so he was able to go in there and play you know um play music and stuff so a lot of times he would be in there, you know, he'd find people that could sing and whatever. And he didn't care, you know, if if they was whatever, you know, because I used to call him Biscuit in the Weirdo. You know, sometimes he might be in there with a dude who was who was suspect, homosexual. He might be in there with a weird old dude, you know what I'm saying? But it didn't matter to Biscuit. As long as they could sing and, you know, that was his thing. You know, his dude would create music. He'd write music. And like I say, he was extremely talented, man. Um... And a lot of his music, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be traditional gospel music, you know. And then sometimes he would go in there on Sundays and he would get the uh, the little choir that he had formed off the prison yard and they would play them songs, you know. And they really, really, the uh, congregation, the prison congregation that was up in there 
really, really appreciate it, you know, his music and stuff like that. And so from time to time, me and a couple of my homies, we would go up in there and we would listen to the music and stuff. And also I would be up in there rapping, um, not on Sundays, but they had a little room that set off to the side. So we'd go up in there and we'd rap and all this type of stuff. So it was really a cool, um, having that music was really a cool outlet for him and uh, for myself as well, right? And so he wasn't really heavily in the church outside of just going in there and to be able to play and, you know, do his music thing. Right. So now on the yard, I remember there happened to be because there, there was the chapel wasn't all that big. And sometimes on, you know, maybe on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night, they would also the Christians would also have basically like a church outside on the baseball field bleachers and the, the preacher was a Hispanic dude you know but now in this church congregation um you know it was blacks whites Mexicans you know whoever whoever was a Christian you know because that's that's one thing in at least in the California prisons where it's not segregated you know now of course if something was to jump off a person is still expected to ride with his race but they didn't they didn't trip on you know uh the uh Christians whether they was Hispanic black or whatever you know Mexican um, Asian, you know, being in the same fellowship congregation or whatever, right? And so this particular preacher, he happened to be a Mexican dude, you know. And so one day, here comes another black dude who's saying that he's a preacher now. Now, Ironwood is a level three. They have a prison right across the street by the name of Chuckawalla. So now here, here comes this other dude. I forget the name of this dude, man. And he was maybe about 45 years old, maybe about 5'7", 185, 190 pounds, you know, big, uh, big gut on him and stuff. But now this dude is a preacher. So now, or he says, you know, he says he's a preacher and that's what he was doing over there. So he can't come to Ironwood in his mind and be part of somebody else's fellowship. You know, it doesn't matter sometimes whether it's gang leaders, whether it's preachers, whether it's dudes who claim they are legal beagles. A person wants to always be top dog. I noticed in prison, man. So it seemed like to me the Christian thing would have done the Christian thing that to do would have been. For him to come to this New York that he landed on and acknowledge what was already going on as far as this dude who had his collective, you know, in uh, preaching to this congregation and be part of that congregation. And maybe at some point in time, try to work your way in and preach a sermon or two or whatever. But notice the black dude, the black preacher, he wants his own fellowship. He wants to be the head preacher or whatever. So he slowly starts causing dissension and picking a few people out of that old congregation to come to be in, in his congregation. Now, he didn't start his own little fellowship type thing where he can preach and do the type of stuff that he liked. So um, initially, I don't believe it was supposed to be like, you know, a racial thing or whatever, but eventually that's what the black dude somewhat sort of made it, you know. Uh, so now you start having black dudes leave that other uh, fellowship and congregation that was ran by the Mexican dude, and now they're coming to be in, in his uh, fellowship that he's having on bleachers at a different time. And, you know, due to the fact that me and Biscuit is cool and Biscuit plays the music, I'm hearing bits and pieces of what's going on. You know, now you did have some black dudes who stayed loyal to the original fellowship they was in with the Mexican dude. But now you notice this dude. Now he has his own congregation. And it was a large amount of people in both one of these congregations. So when the Mexican dude might be out there, you know, uh, having church, you might have 25, 30 people sitting on the bench. And then so eventually the new black preacher who came over there, he had a decent sized following as well. So um, like I said, my homie Biscuit, he's in and out of the chapel playing this music. And so one, one of these days, you know, on Sundays, he goes up in there. And he plays his music. He plays his song. You know, I, like I said, I used to call him Biscuit in the Weirdos. You know, he, he's up in there. He's singing his stuff up in there, right? He got his little group up in there. And so the new black preacher happens to hear some of the songs that Biscuit is singing, and I guess he becomes upset because in his mind, they are not traditional songs. You know, some of these songs have a, a hip-hop vibe to them. They're upbeat. He's singing. I remember there was this one dude by the name of Wade. Wade was from Compton. He could sing real well, you know. Um, another dude, now this dude wasn't in the group, and he wasn't part of the Biscuit and the Weirdos. This dude was a real solid dude, a crip uh, from Venice Showline, Ace Capone. So shout out to Ace Capone. You know, another dude that uh, uh, used to be in Biscuit's group singing was a dude by the name of Blue. Blue was from um, Avalon Gangsters. Also, Word Up. Word Up is a cool dude from the east side of Riverside, you know, and so all these dudes had musical talents and they would come together and, uh, you know, get in there and do their thing. Piano, 
uh, uh, keyboard, that type of stuff, right? And uh, so now on one on this one day in particular, this one uh, upcoming Sunday, Biscuit is fixed to go in there once again and perform with his group. So now me uh, and the homie Maniac from Gateway, uh, the homie Stretch from the Projects, Rest in Peace, and a few of us, we happen to go up in here. You know, we going up in here to listen to the music and support Biscuit, right? And so, like I said, now, on this particular Sunday, some type of way, this black preacher has weaseled his way into being the head of the ceremony or whatever. He's up there. He's preaching and stuff. And so, you know, they got the little program and everything, what they get ready to do. You know, they come in here and maybe they uh, talk for a little while. This dude does his sermon. Then they, you know, they sing a few songs or whatever. Then he goes back to the preaching or whatever. So right before it came time for Biscuit and the Weirdos to get up there. <laughs> for Biscuit and the Weirdos to get up there and do their songs and all that old type of stuff, right? The black preacher, man, he going to this real, like, this real, I mean, only thing I can really say, man, the dude went into this real hater-ass type of prayer, man. You know what I'm saying? And for anybody that was in the know, because like I said, he didn't really like the sound of Biscuit's music because Bi uh, um, Biscuit's music definitely sounded, was, but was extremely better than Kurt Franklin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Kurt Franklin and his gospel. I'm telling you, man, this dude Biscuit was extremely, extremely talented. So anyway, the uh, black preacher, he had a problem, like I said, with Biscuit's music not sounding like that old school gospel, I guess, that he had grew up on or whatever. And he thought the music was on the verge of being, you know, ungodly or whatever, right? So right before Biscuit and the Weirdos get up there to perform, uh, the preacher going to this hateful type of sermon, right? And he's like, or, or this prayer. So he he's doing this thing and he said, okay, you know, let us pray. Everybody bow their heads, you know. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, dear Lord, definitely be sure to bless our sermon today, Father God. Dear Lord, definitely be sure to bless the music that we're about to hear, Father God. Let the music be pleasing to your ears, Father God. Father God, don't let the music be of that of the devil, Father God. Father God, have blessing on the music. So all of a sudden, the homie Biscuit realized, hold on, man. This is this bitch ass motherfucker up there praying, uh, praying, um, praying against me and shit, right? So now Biscuit. Now, the homie Biscuit ain't nothing but about 5'10", right? But Biscuit is probably 135 pounds soaking wet. Biscuit is skinny as all outdoors, right? But Biscuit is with the business. He don't give a fuck about none of that. He gonna push a line, right? So now, like I said, I grew up with the understanding that, man, the church and the chapel is holy. You know what I'm saying? I digress real quick, but I remember when I first got arrested, right? And I hit the county jail. They give you a Bible when you first go up in there. Now, the first couple of papers in them little cheap Bibles that they give us was extremely thin. And you would have dudes in there tearing them pages out, smoking uh, a weed or smoking uh, cigarettes. Now, even though I'm in there for three attempted murders and a murder, I said, man, you motherfuckers is going to hell, man. I, some Somebody like, hey, chill, uh, uh, let, let us get those uh, uh, papers out of your Bible. I'm like, man, I'm not just to give you the damn papers up out of my Bible. You motherfuckers headed to hell. So, you know. For these dudes in jail, man, they didn't give a damn about church. Church wasn't, uh, you know, church wasn't godly and none of that old type of stuff if it came to something that they wanted to do. But like I said, man, I digress. So anyway, we back to the church in Ironwood. We in the chapel, and this dude is making this sermon against the homie Biscuit. Dear Lord, Father God, Father God, please bless the music that we're about to hear today, Father God. Let it be pleasing to your ears, Heavenly Father, Lord. Dear Lord, don't let the music be that of the devil, Father God. Father God, have blessings on the sound. Biscuit all of a sudden standing up. He like, hey, man, you bitch-ass motherfucker. I look at the homie Biscuit. I'm like, oh, Biscuit not in the church. The, the, now, like I say, everybody got their heads bowed except for Biscuit. Biscuit stand up and he own one. Hey, you bitch, you hear me talking to you? So now everybody lifting their head up and shit. He said, yeah, you bitch motherfucker. Don't, behi don't hide behind no motherfucking prayer. If you got something you want to say, motherfucker, say it. Motherfucker. He said, oh, no, brother. You don't understand, dear brother, what I'm trying to say. He said, oh, man, fuck all that. Don't hide behind no scriptures, nigga. Say what you got to say, motherfucker. And so now everybody is looking around. I'm, I got the homie Biscuit by the leg. I'm like, Biscuit, homie, kick back, kick back. He knocking my hand down. He like, no, fuck that. This bitch got something to say. Let this bitch say what he gonna say. <laughs> so the dude ended up breaking Get it all down, man. And uh sitting, you know, he didn't want no problems. He wasn't talking about biscuit. Biscuit was like, Yeah, nigga, you better turn the other cheek, and then I'll punch you in that motherfucker too. 
So we looking at Biscuit. I'm like, oh, man, this dude Biscuit tripping. I'm thinking we fixed to get into it with people that's in the congregation. And now, it's a couple of us in there. Like I said, me, the homie Stretch, rest in peace, the homie Maniac. We going to definitely ride. But, man, getting into a getting into a fight. In the chapel is not what I went up in that church for that day, man. But my boy Biscuit was off the chain, man. So we, you know, we end up, Biscuit ended up still, you know, doing his songs, playing whatever songs he was getting ready to play and all that type of stuff, right? So later that day, of course, like I said, me and the homie Biscuit, we sell these, right? So later on, when we get back in there for yard recall or whatever, whatever, you know, when we finally did lock it up, I'm like, man, Biscuit, man, you crazy as hell, man. You went off on a boy in the chapel. He like, oh, man, yeah, fuck that chill. That motherfucker got something to say, man. Let him say what he gonna say. Don't be hiding behind no prayer. I never did like that old bitch motherfucker anyway. I'm like, yeah, Biscuit, man, you burnt out, man. So anyway, y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program.